so let's just skip all these preliminary boring things because that you know all this about me that I do OSS projects and that I run uh, along with many other on this call, Arizona Give Camp, and that I also have a list of my favorite physicists and favorite mathematicians. And let's skip right to talking about event storming today. Um, event storming is uh, something I've had a lot of success with lately. I've gotten a lot of inf um, interesting information out of doing it. So I wanted to share that, uh, what it is with you, and it'll just be a very high level introduction, but hopefully um, uh, pique some interest. So it is a process of business modeling. Um, so we're modeling our domains from the perspective of the business people. And there's really three things we want to get out of an event storming session. And it usually actually will take multiple sessions. But the three things that are going to come out of it are a visual model of the domain, um, in some, you know, like the one pictured here, but also two other things, a ubiquitous language document. So if you're familiar with domain driven design, ubiquitous language is a, uh, a it's a concept from DDD uh, where it's all of the uh, terms that are needed by the team that are needed that are part of the business domain and they're from the perspective of the business and the entire team shares those and agrees on them and uses those terms so that we're not uh, using different terms in engineering as the business than the business uses. And then the third thing we get out of it is we get this common understanding among all team members. So the whole team participates and builds up this model together. And so what you end up with is this shared understanding uh, with everybody involved in the building of the software and the uh, running of the business and everybody's on the same page. So let's uh, talk about that process a little bit. There are four steps in this process. The first is a very, very much a brainstorming session. It's we collect these domain events. The second step is we go through and we refine those, revisit them, understand them better. And then we start getting really interesting. We start tracking the causes of those events, figuring out where they come from and how we create them. And then finally, uh, we'll start actually doing where we'll build up that, that model uh, by uh, creating subsystems or um, talking about the aggregates involved in them. And we'll drill into each of those steps here momentarily. Now, this process, occurs around the concept of a domain event. And I, I want to um, be very clear here that we're not talking necessarily about a message. This is something that happens. It's a historical fact. That historical fact may result in a message being sent, some signal that says this event occurred, but it is the historical fact that is the event. And we describe it in the past tense because it's history. It's something that has happened. And of course you can't change history. So this is an, a, a, an immutable fact. And it's also very much implementation agnostic. So like I said, it doesn't need to be something we're going to send out. It is something that happened. So how are we gonna use these domain events to build up this model? Well, we're gonna start with step one and that is the brainstorming step. This is where we collect these events. So we're just gonna start by having everybody on the team just start throwing out these facts that happened, throwing out everything they can think of and kind of put it up on a rough timeline. And we'll use orange sticky notes for that. Now this process often takes place in person. It's best when it's done in person, but it can also work very well. And obviously in the last year, uh, most of the sessions of this we've done were, were done virtually. Uh, we've been using Lucid charts for it, but uh, there are other tools, virtual whiteboarding tools that will work. Um, so we put these orange stickies down for these domain events and we order them roughly from the, you know, on a timeline. So left side is the things that happen first, right side things that happen last, and we can kind of stack things that happen roughly simultaneously. And then the other thing we do in this first step is we use pink stickies to identify any questions or concerns. So there can be some conversations around it, but we don't want to drill too deep into things at this point because mostly we're brainstorming. So anywhere where we have, you know, is that really right? Well, we may need to look into that. We throw a pink sticky up there as well. 
And that also gives us a visualization of where in our model the questions are at this point. So step one, collect the events. So after collecting events, we may end up with a, a board that looks something like this, a bunch of different things that happen in the domain, all phrased in the past tense, user role assigned, user logged in, a question was asked, that kind of thing. And then these pink, pink stickies that identify where the questions are, what things we still have to resolve. All right. So that's step one. Now, step two, we go through and we revisit this. And this is where everybody comes together. So at the beginning, everybody's up there throwing stickies on the board. There may be side conversations, which are easier to have in person than, um, uh, than uh, when we're on, uh, on Zoom or something like that. Uh, but we all come together at this point and we all get this shared understanding. What does each of these events mean? Um, at this point, we're probably going to find some new events. So we'll start talking about, you know, oh, that, you know, by exploring one, we may see something else that happened. Uh, we're going to try and resolve any pink stickies. So if there's any questions, we're going to uh, try and get those answered and get the, the results of that tagged up on the board. Uh, but if there's any unresolved ones or if there's any new questions that we need to add that, are, that we can't resolve, uh, we should add those as well. So after step two, we're going to get a much cleaner um, picture of the, of the events that occur. You can see that any of these can happen initially, any of these along the left side, and they tend to result in things that happen further along to the right. So we're starting to refine our model now. And this is where we're also making sure, and we're doing this all the way through, of course, that our ubiquitous language is being uh, document is being updated. Uh, it's most important here in step two where everyone is together. You try and get these things um, set up in step one, but by the end of step two, you should have a fully flushed out ubiquitous language document where every key uh, nomenclature is defined to the best of your ability. And then everybody uses those terms. All right, now let's move on to step three. And in step three, we're gonna introduce a bunch of new stickies. Uh, we've got three stickies here that are the sources of these events. So we're, we're tracking the causes of our events now. And what things can create these events? Well, they can be created by a user. They could be created by an internal bit of business logic, or they could be created by some external system and you know a, some business logic, but that comes outside of our domain or our business process or what have you. So these three things can create them. And then they can utilize both commands or uh, and or view or read models. So for example, a user, when they say, when a user says do something, that is usually issuing a command. Um, and they may issue that command based on data from a view model. Likewise, business processes often take advantage of read models. Um, so they, they may, you know, gather data and then they can have issue events or commands, generally just events, uh, usually only users issue commands. Um, but they can then create their own additional events. So we're gonna go through these, uh, through all of our events and determine what things caused those events and now start building up that timeline. And what we then may end up with is something that looks like this. Each of our events has their causes tacked onto it with the appropriate view models, with the business processes identified, and then in cases like over here on the right side where one event triggers another event, we'll see that as well. So now we're really starting to get a picture of our, of our flows, of how the domain itself works together. And so here's a kind of a close in view of one. You can see that uh, uh, 
an administrator may take may get some new uh, have some new vehicle data then add that vehicle there may be a validation process which then triggers if it's valid uh it may trigger then a vehicle added to inventory event which may notify certain customers who have subscribed say to hey when new vehicles of this type are added i want to know about it so that business process can then end up notifying customers and issue customer notified events so we've got a much better picture now but there's one more step and that is to uh, work around the aggregates so an aggregate um, in then this is again another domain driven design concept an aggregate is just a cluster of domain objects that can be treated as a single one so in this case, I've identified a user which has a collection of roles. Um, so if we're thinking about it in the context of a user, we have this user aggregate, and it also has a role object along with it. And the, the root object is, is called the aggregate root. So in this case, from when we're looking at it from the user context, user is the aggregate root, and we may have a user subsystem that deals with that. We're going to have an aggregate around user. And of course, this can be viewed from the other direction uh, in certain contexts where role might be the aggregate root and a, each role has a collection of users that are associated with it. And that may be part of a role subsystem or something like that. So then we take those aggregates, we define the aggregates that we see in, in our system and we start grouping all of those flows that we saw in the previous at the end of the previous step we group those all into the uh, into the aggregates and basically what that is a good proxy for is a microservice um, if you've grouped them well and you can see the communications between those aggregates between those groupings um, what you find is that uh, or what i've found is that each of these does a really good job of representing um, a good fit for a microservice. So I've just drilled in here so you can see it that uh, this might be a user subsystem uh, built into a uh, into a, a system here. So the user might do a log uh, do a login, which would issue a user login event to anyone else who cares that this user is logged in. Um, if we were to actually issue that as a message, so we were to send a message out, say on a bus somewhere that says, hey, this user logged in, other subsystems could subscribe to that message and, and then maybe prep, maybe cache data that they might need because that user is, is coming. But again, this is a historical fact. We don't necessarily have to send out, we don't have to publish a message as a result of this this is the fact that occurred the user logged in so let's wrap this up here uh what we're doing in event storming is we're doing this modeling process it's about the business and it's from the perspective of how the business sees it we do these four steps where we collect the events we refine them we track their causes and then we group them by their aggregates and everything is powered around these domain events so how those are, are occur are some of the key things to look for. And then we end up with these three critical things, the visual model of the domain, the ubiquitous language document, and then that big shared understanding, which may be the most important thing of all. So I'm, I am over time here. You can get to this uh, slide deck at that uh, URL that I posted in the, uh, uh, in the chat, and I'll answer any questions that you might have.